Hi, yeah, I'm Lara and I'm an author at Osborne Publishing and I've written Lift the Flap questions and answers about money with expert help from me, Bobby Seagull. I'm a maths teacher, author, broadcaster and maths numeracy campaigner. And um, it's beautifully illustrated by Mary Eve Trombley, who created these really gorgeous illustrations and colour palettes that you love, Bobby, don't you? So, Bobby, as you know, we've got some questions inside this piggy bank that viewers like to know. And likewise, Lara, I've also got some questions for you. Shall I start? Please do. Let's find the first one. First question for you is, why is understanding how money works so important? Gosh, that's a really important question. Um, if you think about everything that we do in a day, you know, we'll have breakfast, or if you're going to school, getting the bus, everything in our lives involves money, so it's like such an important thing. Yeah. Why do prices often end with a nine? That's a really good question. Basically, it's because it makes things look like a better deal. So if you've got something for £4.99, it seems cheaper than £5, even though it's actually only one pence uh, less. Got you. Here's another question for you, Bobby. Does being good at maths make you good at money? Oh, you're asking a maths teacher. So as a teacher, I always teach my students how important it is to be able to add, subtract, multiply, divide. And actually, money skills are all about that. Maths is so critical. You would say that as a maths teacher. <laughs> I would do. <laughs> Here's a question for you. Why does every country have a different type of money? Oh, yes, that's true, isn't it? So. For example, in uh, the UK, you'd have a five pound note that looks like this, but then in France and Europe, you'd have a five euro note. Mm. And that's because um, every country wants to have its own money and be in charge of it, so that they can choose the way it looks, its name, its symbol, and how much of it there is around. Ah, can I have some money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, oh, fell out. <laughs> so, how much money does a person need, Bobby? Ooh, well, if you're a child, and you're spending money on, let's say, toys and stationery for school, we need to make sure you have enough to cover that. But if you're a grown-up, you've got to spend money on bigger things like house bills and electricity and cars. Yeah. Okay, what do we have in store? Could we live without money? And also, what do people do before money is invented? Well, we couldn't really live without money um, because all the things you really need, like food and toiletries and electricity, cost money. Um, but obviously there was a time when money didn't exist and way back when people used to make things and grow things they needed and if they needed extra things, they'd swap them, they'd ask their neighbours for them and give them something in exchange and that was known as bartering. Oh. How do I get better at maths? Ooh. So like anything that's a skill, like whether you want to learn to bake or dance or sing or play netball, all of these things require practice and maths is the same. The more you practice, the more comfortable you get at the subject. Okay, so it's not a quick magic solution. Sadly not. Practice makes close to perfect. <laughs> well, this is a good question. What would you do with a million pounds? That is so much money. <laughs> um, I think people would want to do so many different things with it. They might want to give some to family members mm. or buy a car or save some up for a rainy day, give some to their favourite charity. Mm. I think personally, I'd probably uh, want to buy a really lovely home and, um, and give some to charity too. How, how about you? What would Ooh. you do with it? I think I'd love to see the world, but take a few friends with me as well. Oh, that's really nice. That would be really fun. What would you do with a million pounds?